Hi, everybody. It's kind of amazing to be in person with you all and to hear your voices as we speak the liturgy together. Liturgy literally means the work of the people, and we are now people, lots of people gathered together, protecting one another and the children with our masks on, but we are together. I don't even have words to describe to you what it does to a pastor's heart to hear everybody singing and speaking the words of the prayers and the psalm in unison. It almost makes me feel excited enough to shout with joy about the Holy Spirit and about Jesus to the point that you might accuse me of being drunk because I am that excited about the Holy Spirit. I am that excited about Jesus and I am that excited that we are together again as a community in a different way than we have been able to be in the last year. And so I'm experiencing unbelievable joy. And as one of you know, one of the ways that I engage Bible stories is by actually thinking about what must it be like to experience the story? If you remember from our Pentecost reading, and many of you have been in church for most of your lives, so you probably know this story that we celebrate every year. The disciples are preaching about Jesus in every possible language, and they all get accused of being drunk. What would it be like to be so excited about Jesus and to share that so powerfully that everybody thought you were drunk or maybe needed some psychiatric help. Could you imagine being that excited? I don't know, it'd be pretty hard. It's real hard for Lutherans uh, because most of us have grown up in churches where we sit still and don't really interact. And that's what we were taught about church. But just because it's Pentecost, and we're excited to be here together. I want to invite all of you here to cheer with me so loudly that the people over there on Zoom are like, what are they drinking in the sanctuary this morning? Okay, are you ready to be excited for Jesus with me? Ready? All right, yay, Holy Spirit! Yeah, woo! Yay, Holy Spirit! All right. Let everybody hear your voices of praise and thanksgiving that we get to be all together again. On that first Pentecost, though, the disciples seemed excited because Jesus, right, in our Gospel of John reading today, Jesus warns them that Jesus is going to send an advocate. Jesus says, now that I have ascended, which we did last week, right, I will send the Holy Spirit to be with you, to tell you how to proclaim my name to all nations. So they knew something was going to happen. I doubt they knew that fire was going to appear above everybody's heads. That was probably a relatively strange thing to see. I would imagine that the people around the disciples felt a little scared. I want to invite you all to shake your flags above your heads or above your neighbor's heads and look around the sanctuary and imagine what would it be like to suddenly see a bunch of disciples of Jesus with flames above their heads. It would be strange, right? It'd be a little scary, right? So sit with that for a minute. Sometimes sharing about Jesus can be scary. Sometimes when we want to shout from the rooftops about how much we love Jesus, how much Jesus has inspired us, how much we are experience the joy of unconditional love and grace, how much we want to celebrate what Jesus has done for us. Sometimes we want to do that and we get afraid. Some of you have heard some of my stories in the last year and know that I am a pastor primarily because Jesus has literally saved my life multiple times. 
There was the time when I was 13 years old and I thought every day about ending my own life. And the couple of times that I was about to make an attempt, Jesus appeared in my head and said, Jessica, don't. I gave you life, so you don't have the right to take your own life. And I have a plan for you, and you have to stay here on the earth until I have that plan. It was a mystical experience. It was a Holy Spirit experience. And that makes me really excited about Jesus. And that is only one of my stories. Many of you know, I've also experienced a lot of health issues and physical things. And there are things that I only got through because of the miracles of Jesus saving my life. And it's scary to tell that story. It's scary to be like those early disciples and to feel the Holy Spirit and to say, listen, I love Jesus because Jesus saved my life. And I want you to know that love. I am so excited about this story. I want you to know how deeply Jesus loves you, how deeply Jesus is able to be there for you. I want you to experience that same peace and joy and celebration. And sometimes when I do that, people say, nah, Jesus's followers are all about hate and judgment and exclusion and telling people how to be perfect and telling people how to behave and I'll never be perfect enough. I don't have the right clothes to go to church. I don't have the right attitude to go to church. I have too many tattoos. I have too many earrings. I smoked too much pot last night and drank too much alcohol. Nobody wants to see me in church. Sometimes people who are homeless say, listen, I'm not going to go to church because I smell too bad and church won't let me have a shower while I'm there. And so why would I go and have everybody judge me and turn me away? Jesus has done amazing things for us. There is great joy in knowing who we are and whose we are. And there is great joy in not judging other people. There is great joy in being able to share, you know what? Christianity isn't about judgment and it's not about perfect behavior. And it's not about saying you did all the right things. So you're in the in club and you did all the wrong things and you're in the out club or you are the perfect thing. So you're in the in club and you are the perfect thing. So you're in the out club. The Pentecost story where everybody gets flames on top of their head is about proclaiming the gospel of Jesus to everybody who was there in their own language. Jesus, the Holy Spirit didn't say, I'm gonna make sure that you only speak the language of the people from the countries that I like. I'm gonna make sure you only speak the language of the people from the languages that I like the best or the ones that behave the best. No, on Pentecost, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to open up the gospel so that everybody, everybody can have access to that life-saving relationship with Jesus so that everybody can know a Jesus who loves them and wants to save their lives. This is a great thing to celebrate. Let us celebrate the Holy Spirit today. Let us Breathe in, as Miss Ann said, breathe in the Holy Spirit and allow it to inspire us. Allow it to put that flame of the Holy Spirit on our own hands so that we too can be so excited about sharing the life-giving love of Jesus that people are drawn to the joy, to the celebration, to knowing that they are deeply and unconditionally loved without barriers, without rules, without having to be right or wrong, but just because they are part of the community and they are loved. On Pentecost, we celebrate the story by being willing to share it with anybody and everybody and inviting all people from all nations, from all languages, from all statuses, from all identities, to join us in celebrating what it means 
to have a Jesus who saves our lives. Thanks be to the Holy Spirit who is constantly shaking us up, pushing us out of our comfort zone and who gives us everything that we need to truly celebrate what it means that we are the church and that we are able to use all of the languages we know to invite everyone into this life-saving love. Let us celebrate the Holy Spirit now and the way the Holy Spirit shook up those disciples and the people who heard them on the first Pentecost and the way the Holy Spirit might be shaking us up now. Celebrate with me so loudly that all the people at home wonder what's going on in the sanctuary. Are you ready? Yay, Holy Spirit! Woo! Yay, Holy Spirit! Yay, Holy Spirit! Thank you, everyone.